Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about my treatment plan, the medications, there's a lot of them, and the side effects, they're not fun. Um, so the treatment plan basically is six months, two times a month for a total of 12 sessions. A week ago Friday, I just finished my fifth session went really well um, and there really weren't any issues during it I just was very sleepy one of the medications made me sleepy um, if you were on our group page you saw picture Margaret took a picture of me and had my hat over my head I was out that medication I'm not sure which which one it was knocked me out I was ex just like boom I looked at her and I said I gotta go sleep and that was it I was out um, so I don't remember a whole lot of it, so it went smoothly. Um, <laughs> I guess you say that. Uh, so that was a week ago Friday. This last Thursday, today is Sunday. This last Thursday, we did our labs. The labs came back. I'm, I'm in good. I'm in good shape. My sugar is elevated, um, but that's it, can, it. Elevates and it goes down. It goes up. Goes down. Um, my white blood cells. Um, I'm still I'm still in the in the black, I guess. <laughs> I'm, so I was still really good there. I was a little low, um, but it was still I was still in the safe zone. Uh, so I didn't you know give it become neutropenic or anything like that, which was really what we're what we're trying to avoid because that's what put me in the hospital the first time I was there for six days. That was not fun. Um, so the treatment plan basically uh, is. I'm supposed to be at 100% of these medications that they're giving me for the chemo. Um, but after that first session that put me in the hospital for six days, my doctor, she lowered it to um, 80%. And that seems to be working really well with my body. It's actually even working really well against the cancer, as you saw in like the, the PET scan. If you're following again, Margaret put the, the verbiage of the PET scan on there. and. Um, we're doing really well. Um, it's doing a job. We're going to find out this coming Thursday. I'm sorry, this coming Friday, my next, my sixth chemo. We're going to find out whether or not I'm going to go back to a full 100% or if I'm going to stay at the 80%. Um, I'm a little worried and concerned about the 100% because of what it did the first time, but we have things in place now. Um, I, the one thing we realize is um, we think that the Nulesta, that's supposed to stimulate my bones to to um, to make more white blood cells, didn't really work correctly the first time. Um, every time since then, it seems to have done its job. So we think that issue might be resolved. And then now I also have some um, antibiotics that if I need, all I'll have to do is phone and they'll order them and then we just go pick them up on that same day. And I can start that antibiotic treatment if my white blood cells get low enough to put me in that neutropenic zone, okay? Um, so we have these things kind of set in place um, and uh, hopefully that, that works perfectly. So the plan, the treatment plan is A plus A, V, D. And that's the, the I guess the terminology that they use for it. So it's, I'll try to read them to you. <clears throat> so this is the first one. The trade name is Adcetris, so that would be the A. It's called Brantuximab Vidotin. Brantuximab Vidotin. Vidotin. Yeah, whatever. Okay, that's the first one that they give me, it's chemo. Um, and it's used for uh, treatment of adult pa uh, patients with previously untreated stage three or four classical Hodgkin's lymphoma in combination with chemotherapy. Okay, so that's one of them. The other one is Valban, uh, Val Valblastine. The trade names are Alcaban, AQ, or Valban. Um, 
And this, this one, it says, this drug is given to treat Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, testicular, breast, non-small cell lung cancer, head and neck and bladder cancers, melanoma, soft tissue sarcoma, Kaposi's sarcoma, mycosis fungioides, T-cell lymphoma, and I'm not even trying to read that one. That's just, that's just a lot. Um, it can be used to treat fibromyosis and germ cell tumor. Um, so this is the third one they give me. Now the fourth one, because one of them, I'm going to give you the bad one last. So I need to find it here real quick. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay, so then the fourth medication that they give me is the trade name is DTIC hyphen dome. Um, it's called the carbazine. The carbazine, that's really easy. Um, and it's used for metast metastic malignant melanoma, Hodgkin's disease, soft tissue sarcomas, neuroblastoma, fibrosarcomas, yep, not even gonna read that one, um, islet cell sarcoma, sar sarcinoma, and medullary sarcinoma of, of thyroid. That's the third one they give me. And this one, this one is, if you are on our page, our group page, Margaret did a video of the um, the nurse and she's shooting, she had this big syringe and she's shooting this red one in me. Okay. Um, that's how it has to be given. Um, that's actually because that was when it was lowered to 80%. So it's small. That syringe is small now. When it was 100%, that syringe was bigger and it was a lot more that they gave me. That's what basically just knocked my hair out. Okay. It's called Dox, Doxorobicin. Um, the trade names are Adreomycin and Rubix. And uh, let me see, it's used for anti-cancer chemotherapy drug doxo, doxorubicin is classified as an anti, anthracycline antibiotic. Um, it's used for a lot of stuff. Um, bone sarcoma, breast cancer, um, gastric cancer, head and neck cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, liver cancer, kidney cancer, multiple um, melanoma, neuroblastoma, ovarian cancer, small cell lung cancer, soft tissue sarcoma, thymoid, thyroid cancer. It, it, it's used a lot. They call it the red devil. Um, it basically just eliminates the hair one of one session with that at a hundred percent and then i ended up in the hospital for six days so didn't take a shower nothing right they had those use those cloth things came home to take a shower and i went like this and my hand was full of hair and there was hair all over my body it was just falling out um it's harsh it's it's really harsh that's the treatment along with those chemo or medications that i'm receiving the first thing they do is they hook me up and they give me an iv bag fluids that's the first thing it's a big bag then they give me um, i take some tylenol then they give me a nausea medication and they give me um an antibiotic and that's these are all drip now the the Tylenol is just the two, two pills that's it everything else is drip so the the IV bag the nausea medication the antibiotic drip those are drips and then when those that hold the IV bag this is big it lasts the entire time and then the other ones are smaller bags they do those preliminary bags, then they start with the chemo. 
the third one I get is the Red Devil, and then they give me the last bag. Um, they last 30 minutes to an hour. The, um, the, the Red Devil in the syringe, that takes about three minutes because she's, they're doing it there very slowly. Um, maybe three minutes at the most. Um, and so that's the, the treatment plan for me, right? Go along, that's what I'm getting when I get there. Um, it's a little intimidating when you first get in there um, and you see other people in, in their stage of what they're going through, whatever type of cancers that they have. Um, you see some that are there, they get their treatment and they also get, um, uh, what is that called? When you get blood. They get blood. <laughs> um, the Erokan Miller. Um, and they'll, they'll sit and we have this like one, two, one, two, three, four. It's like four or five chairs in these, in these little areas. <clears throat> and there's a nurse, one nurse, she takes care of everything. And in the next area of four to five chairs, there's another nurse. Um, and uh, they kind of sometimes will work together. Because they, they have to, like, when they're going to give me a new medication, the nurse has to come over and she reads off, they shoot my band first, pops up on their um, computer screen, and then she reads, one nurse is looking at my band, she's reading the information to the, te to the teacher, to the nurse. That nurse is saying, oh, yes, yes, okay, we have the right, this is the right person. And even though they know, every single time they have to do it, every single time which is cool because it's kind of comforting. They're not, they're following those steps to keep everybody safe and make sure everybody's getting the right medication, right? So that's kind of cool. I like that. So that's the treatment. Along with the treatment comes the medications. So the medications are what I have at home. I have four or five different types of nausea medications. Um, so let's just say I have five. So four of them are pills. And one, uh, you put it in your tongue and it dissolves. Have not had to use them, thank God. Um, I haven't had any type of nausea, vomiting, none of those issues at all. Because I hate to vomit. I hate it. Um, I, um, I've developed techniques to get myself from, from vomiting because I, I can't stand throwing up. Um, so I don't need those. Uh, I am taking, um, every day I take, okay, I take, um, acyclovir, acyclovir, it's generic for, why did they make these names so complicated, Zovirax. Um, that's supposed to help with, I believe, the um, sores that you can get in your mouth, that kind of stuff. So you got to drink a lot of water constantly. Excuse me. I also have to brush my teeth at least three, four times a day. I have a ton of toothbrushes. Then when I when I'm done with my toothbrushes, Margaret takes them and she does this little. She boils them and uh, cleans them up and sanitizes them. And then I get them back and. That's how we have to do things to make sure we don't get sores in our mouth. Um, I have one sore that I get on a continuous basis. It goes away, comes back, goes away, comes back. It's on this side and it's on my tongue on the inside. Um, it kind of rubs up against my molars sometimes, but it's, it's manageable. It doesn't really bother me whatsoever. I can eat with it, all that kind of, no problems whatsoever. Very, very fortunate that it's, it's working. Um, also have a, 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 a mouthwash that we, I make, um, and that has helped. It's really weird. It makes your mouth, um, not pasty, but it makes your saliva like kind of thick, but at the same time, it, um, like it's coating. It doesn't allow your mouth to dry because I'll wake up at night and my mouth is completely dry like there's no spit whatsoever and i'll i'll like have to force myself to like generate some some spit and now just i'll drink some water because the water's right next to my bed i'll drink some water uh and 
and then it'll, it'll my mouth will get wet again. This first time, it, first time it happened was really strange. It was bizarre. The second thing, and so I take this one every day, <clears throat> the the mouth one, and then I take this one, which is um, it is yeah, it doesn't wait too long. It's Bactrim. This is generic for Bactrim. This I take on uh, Mondays, Fridays, and um, uh, no, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sorry. And I'm actually not sure why I take this one. I knew, but for right now, I can't remember. Sorry about that. Um, so then the other thing I take, um, I also take for my thyroid, I take um, level th level thyroxine. It's synthetic for synthroid. This is for my my, th my thyroid. Um, this is daily, every morning, once in the morning, I take this, and I have to wait 30 minutes to eat after I take this. Now, along with that, because after my second chemo session, I end up in the hospital again for two days because of a rapid heart rate. So they finally, all the tests came out perfect. My heart is great. Um, it's working the way it's supposed to be working. It just gets crazy and starts beating like 140, 150 beats a minute. And um, I get really dizzy, uh, I get really lightheaded, I get weak. Um, and uh, they're like, hey, you know, I could do you get like a heart attack and all this stuff can happen to you. So um, they are, 99.9% .9 that is caused by the medications and the chemo that I'm taking. This is one side effect, okay, of the, the chemo. Um, and um, all the tests come back, great. But at the same time, they're being very careful. So they gave me this. This helps to regulate my heart. Um, only problem, though, is that it could lower your blood pressure. <clears throat> and I kind of have... Normally, I have low blood pressure as it is, so they're concerned. So the smallest this comes in is 25 milli, uh, milligrams. Um, it's called metro, met, metal, metoprolol, M-E-T-O-P-R-O-L-O-L, metoprolol. I tell you, man, these people just making up names to confuse people. Um, and I actually have a little, I have a pill, I have a pill cutter, I have two of them. I have to cut this one in half because they only want me taking 12.5 um, milligrams of, of the medication. I take it in the morning, I take it with my pill. And then eight hours later, I'll take this again by, by itself, only twice a day. Um, and it seems to have helped. Um, I'm not getting as crazy as I was before. I may mean, still get high, like at like 130, 131, somewhere in there. Um, once again, that's another side effect of the um, of the uh, uh, the chemo. This whole plan I'm going through, right? Um, so those are the medications. If I'm missing one medication, um, well, there's two medications: the um, the antibiotics. I'm sorry, I don't have those. Um, and those are only I can only get those when I need them. I, they're not like sitting around the house. Um, because once you get one, have to take for like five days straight, and the other take for like six or seven days straight. So you only get that amount, and then that's it. Then you're done. And if you need them again, then I got to call my doctor, and then she says, "Hey, he can get them." And then they order them for me, and then I go pick them up. And that's really quick. I mean, it happens. The I had to do it once already. Um, I would say it took. It took an hour and a half, and then I got a re response back from the doctor saying they've been ordered for you. And then my daughter, after work, she just drove over and picked them up and brought them home from, for me. So it was really, really easy, really fast. I really appreciate the the speed of that because um, I, I don't want to be neutropenic and I don't want to you end up with a fever and end up in the hospital again. That's the last thing that any of us want to happen. So that's why we have that. So that's the, the treatment for what I'm taking, okay? Um, so now the side effects. Mm. 
So we talked about one of them is the, the rapid heart rate. Um, because of the rapid heart rate and the first time they end up in the hospital, my sister-in-law, Lucy, and brother-in-law, Alex, they actually bought me a watch. Um, it, it, um, it tracks my steps. It tracks a bunch of things. It, I can do an AKG with the watch. Um, uh, it, it does my heart rate at four o'clock. My heart rate was, oh, I'm sorry, two o'clock. My heart rate's at 123. Okay. Um, I guess that was from yesterday. I can do my stress level. Um, just, it's really cool. It's a really cool watch. I really appreciate what they did for me. Um, but on top of that, after the second time, when we were talking to the doctor, Margaret and I were talking to the doctor, and she said, what should we have on hand other than this? Because the doctor said, those are great, but you know, they're not 100% accurate. They could be off, they could be, you know, so, so that you, you should buy an oximeter. Margaret's like, should we buy an oximeter? Yeah, buy an oximeter. So I have this, got a little oximeter. So I just hit the button, put my finger on it, set it on a flat surface, and it'll just read for a little bit. And so right now it's saying my oxygen is at 98% and my heart rate's at 131. A little high, but that's probably because I'm doing all this and being, I don't know, moving too much, I guess, probably. The other thing the doctor said was um, to, to check his blood pressure by a blood pressure machine. So we have a blood pressure machine. It just fell. Hopefully I didn't break it, uh, but it, um, my blood pressure has been fine. Uh, that seems to have has actually regulated, which I'm really happy with. The only thing is the, the heart rate. It just, I'll be lying down or I'll be sitting down and I get up and I'll get up and everything just goes when I can feel my heart rate going. I'm like, all I did was get up. That's all I did. I didn't go, I didn't jump up. I didn't try to run down the street. All I did was stand up, that's all. And my heart just races. It's like, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's a little frustrating because you're trying to be careful. And even when I try to get up nice and slow, do it in steps, like I'll sit down, or if I'm leaning down, I'm laying on the sofa, I'm leaning on the sofa or recliner or the, I have a rocking chair downstairs in the rocking chair and I'm sitting there and I lean forward in the rocking chair and I sit and I wait a little bit and then I go to stand up and I stand up and I, I don't walk right away, I just kind of stand there a little bit. It still goes. And I'm like, are you serious? It's like, really? This is happening, like really? Um, it's, so it gets a little frustrating. Um, so, uh, let me see, okay. So the other thing that happens the other side effect um, are the sores and, um, in my mouth, which luckily, thank God, I have not had a lot of that. I've, I've heard some really horror stories about people not being able to eat. Um, I haven't had any nausea, thank God for that. I've heard horror stories about that. People can't drink water. They put water in their mouth, they automatically throw up. And they're, they're on my lymphoma, this is a group that I'm, I'm part of on Facebook. Somebody was asking, what do I do? Because I, I can't, I can't, I can't put anything in my mouth. I automatically throw it. What am I supposed to do? You know, it's just sad. Um, it breaks my heart for them, you know. Uh, so thank God I'm not dealing with those things. Um, the one side effect that I'm having that is, that is really, uh, it's really bothering me. Well, I'm sorry, there's two. There's two that I really bought. One I've learned to live with. Um, it's awkward and it's weird, but I've learned to live with. And this happened after the first chemo session. Um, I don't have feeling in my fingertips. <clears throat> after I get done with chemo, the next two or three days, I don't have any feeling in my entire hand. There's nothing. I can't. It's just, it's, it's like, when your hand goes to sleep and you get that little prickly sensation, it's like that, but you only feel the prickly sensation when you're doing this or when you put it on something. Um, I shouldn't say I can't feel it because I can feel cold, right? I can feel hot, I can feel that kind of stuff. 
but it just takes a little bit. Like it like has to seep through you. It's not that automatic effect that you get when you're not numb. Um, my hands are, are numb. Um, when I'm typing, I really have to pay attention to what I'm doing because I don't know if I've hit the correct key or if I've even, it's just weird. It's so, when I grab things, I have to make sure that I really hold on to it because I could think that I'm holding on to it and I could feel it want to slide out of my hand. I really have to hold on to it, you know? Um, so I have to pay more attention to it. When, I, when I'm holding a pen, I'm trying to write, uh, so I'll write the thank you notes um, and uh, that kind of stuff to people who are supporting me, which thank you very much, appreciate it so much. Um, and it's hard for me to write because it, you don't have any feeling. It's like you're not in control of it. You don't like you're like you're watching your hands, but someone else is using your hands. Just it's weird. But I've learned to deal with it because at least it's just here. It hasn't gone hasn't gone up my arms or anything like that. So I'm okay. I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, the one side effect that has given me the worst, the worst um, pain and discomfort and frustration is the bone aches and the muscle aches. They told us that when I get the new Lesta, the chemo, one of the side effects is that when the, the Lesta um, triggers your bones to start producing more white blood cells, that your bones can ache and the muscles can ache. All right, that's fine, get it. Um, they didn't say it was gonna be so aggravating, you can't sit down, you can't stand up, you can't lay down. You can't sleep. You, they didn't say any of that, right? <laughs> I mean, because maybe it affects everybody differently. I understand that. But still, you know, um, I wish I would have had a heads up on that. Um, well, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. I'd still be dealing with it. But at least I would, in my head, at least I would have known this is coming. Um, <clears throat> so right now, I'm sitting on a bucket. Um, if anybody's a softball player out there or baseball player, you'll understand this. I have a bucket that I sit on that I used to sit on when I would catch for my daughter. Um, and so that's what I'm sitting on right now because that right now to me is the most comfortable thing to sit on. I have a chair sitting right here that I normally sit on. I can't sit in this thing right now. It's very uncomfortable, it hurts my legs. It actually hurts the back of my legs, um, my hamstrings. They hurt constantly constantly hurt. Um, Biofreeze has become my friend. Um, we're going to also buy a uh, Blue Emo, a uh, suggestion from one of my friends. Um, Charles, he says, were miracles for him when he, uh, after he blew his knee out and the pain he was dealing with, we're going to work on that. So <clears throat> when I was in the hospital for those, those six days, and then the two days after, um, my my body started aching really bad and I couldn't sleep one night and so the nurse I talked to the nurse and she said well we can give you um, Celebrex so they had no in the day they'd give me Celebrex it was all right but at night it got worse it got worse so the nurse comes in and she goes well I can give you I can't give you Celebrex because you already had it um, and it has to be like a 24-hour period she goes um, I can give you uh, Norco and right and I said okay are they really I don't want to get like addicted and she's like well um it is um it, I, I guess barbiturate I don't know but it's she goes, it, but it's, it'll help you know and it's okay give it to me because I couldn't sleep I couldn't sleep I couldn't I, I couldn't it was it was terrible um and so they gave me the Norco and knocked me out the pain went away I slept so I have Norco now. Um, I only take Norco at night and I only take it then because that's when the pain increases the most. Um, and, uh, and so that's the only time I take it. And if I can deal with the pain, if I can sleep with the combination of my Biofreeze 
and the Celebrex, if those two can give me enough of a relief where I can sleep and get three to four hours of sleep without getting up because of the pain, I'm done. I'm cool. I'll take that. That's what I'll take. Um, but there have been some nights where that doesn't work. And I can take the Celebrex and the Norco together. So that's, um, and the Norco I can take um, every six hours as needed, right? For pain. And it says max daily amount for tablets. <clears throat> so that's 24 hours. So that's only six to 24 hours. So it hurts so bad before I started, before I got the Norco and before I got the Celebrex. I would start in the bed. I would get out of the bed. We have a recliner in our in our bedroom. I would go to the recliner. I would lay on the recliner and I would lay a certain way with pillows, basically in a fetal position. And that seemed to alleviate the pain. It seemed like stretch out things enough that it um, it made the pain go away. Um, and then I would be in there for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, wake up in pain again, go to the ground, sleep on the ground for an hour and a half, two hours, get up, go back into the bed, sleep. If it, that didn't work, then I, we have a, an extra room where I am right now. This is a computer room. We also have an extra bed. It's a very old bed. And it's if you lay in it, at a, if you lay at an angle on it, you basically just slide in. You just you can't, you can't like fall into it, right? That is a very comfortable place for me to be. And I can sleep on my back and I'm out and I'll sleep three hours, two and a half, three, maybe four. I'll get lucky and get four hours. And so I'll sleep in here. Um, sometimes this doesn't work. I'll go downstairs. I'll sleep on one of the couches downstairs. That doesn't work. I'll come up into the loft. We have uh, two sofas and um, I'll find one of those sofas and I'll sleep on one of those sofas. Um, but I'll, I'll somehow I'll find a way. Uh, the worst night I think I got maybe maybe three hours of sleep. Um, and then I woke up in the morning because I always wake up in the morning early. I can't sleep late. Uh, so I was up at like six, I think. And then I got up, took my medications about 6.30, uh, laid on a, a, a little sofa that we have in the living room. And um, I basically put myself in the fetal position, threw some blankets on me, I put the TV on and I passed out. Woke up at about, nine nine thirty somewhere in there um felt good but i was still real achy and then um got up went to shower uh i know i ate had a breakfast real fast maybe cereal or something um came upstairs took my shower came into this room laid on the bed and was out again slept another three hours i think i think I think uh, one of my daughters, Karina, came to the room and knocked on the door and said, hey, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, hey, mom, you're not supposed to sleep that much, you know? And I go, yeah, I know. I said, I had a bad night last night and I'm doing all right. Um, but this pain is constant. Um, it goes away. Um, it's worse three days after chemo. And it's, it's bad for four or five days. Then it starts to tail off right as we go into getting chemo again and then the whole process starts over and it the pain basically has just been it's been increasing it's been increasing it's been increasing it's been increasing and and I'm, I'm i feel like i'm doing a good job of managing it figuring out what works um and and just trying to understand that this is what i'm gonna have to deal with um and it sucks it really sucks because it's painful. Um, right now I'm sitting here, both of my calves are killing me. Um, I actually put BioFreeze on my right calf because it was work it was hurting worse than the other one. Um, both Achilles are hurting. Um, my right foot is hurting. My right hamstring is hurting. My left hamstring is hurting. My back is hurting. My lower back is hurting. Um, and um it's just constant just absolute constant now i'm used to living with lower back pain because i've been living with it since 
eighth grade when I decided to play Pop Warner football, which was the biggest mistake. Well, actually, it wasn't the biggest mistake of my life. I was having fun. It was just I had a coach who put me in a position I shouldn't have been in, and I jacked up my back really bad. Um, found out from the chiropractor that at the bottom, bottom end of your spine, I want to say you have five. You have five vertebrae that are fused together. I have six. So what happened was <clears throat> he put me at nose tackle, which I'm just a skinny, skinny, I don't know, maybe weighed 105 pounds, 103, somewhere in there. <clears throat> he put me there. <clears throat> I did good. I got rid of the center and I was going through the line and all of a sudden, the running back or fullback one, he's a big old dude. All I remember is 3-3. Three, three, Cause that's where that's where my hit me like this. Right here. 3-3. Three, three. And he hit me and I went to wrap him and he bent me back. And as he bent me back, I felt everything crunch, pop, crack, whatever. And a searing jolt of pain from the back of my neck all the way down through my body. <clears throat> just like if somebody had just ram a hot spike right through just right through the back <clears throat> hurt and i just my first reaction was i need to stop this i, I continued wrapping him um my teammates helped me. we made the tackle on the guy i got up everything hurt it hurt i took myself out for a little bit because it was a scrimmage uh, it was a madero took my helmet off and i was just like oh I was like, you know, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. Went back in the game. He didn't put me there again. He put me at um, like outside linebacker and stuff. And I was having a great time. I was, I was making tackles. It was fun. It hurt, but I thought, okay, no big deal. I'm, I can still do this. Well, come Monday, we go to practice. I go to put my helmet on, and um, well, like when your arm goes to sleep and your body part goes to sleep, and it has that tingling feeling, it would start right at my temple on this side, and it would just spread just spread and it would only go half of my body. It wouldn't not touch this side of my body at all. And it half of my body and it would be tingling like it's asleep. It would go all in here, all down, all through my arm, all the way down. When it got to about this area, that was it. I take my helmet off. Hey, hey Laura, put your helmet on. Put my helmet on. Whole process started over again. Well, needless to say, after that, I was afraid to hit somebody. The pain was too much. That, that tingling sensation was too much. And then I just I just quit. I'm like, I'm done, I can't do this. Uh, I was afraid to hit people. I was afraid something was gonna happen. Um, the chiropractor had told me, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. We, you can't go in and take that six bone out. Um, <clears throat> what happened is that he said, what he felt happened is when that guy crunched me, he crunched me back, my tailbone basically slammed into everything down here and it just created this, searing pain that I felt and I was going to be very very careful from this point on out that that didn't happen again I'm like well the only way that's not going to happen the only way that's going to happen is if I play football so I can't play football no more so um and I'm a basketball player anyway so hey uh, and then um I hurt my my sciatic nerve really bad fishing I slipped on the mud and I didn't fall I caught myself you know I have I have great reflexes, which saved me from falling, which I should have just fell. That's what the chiropractor said. If, if, you, if you would have fallen, you wouldn't have this problem right now. So I have this double pain from my back, my neck, football, and then my sciatica from the slip when I was fishing. Um, and so I've lived with pain for the majority of my life. I can manage it. Um, sometimes it's really bad, sometimes it's not, and I can deal with it. And I normally do not take any type of medications whatsoever because I want to be, I want to know what's happening in my back. Uh, this, <laughs> uh, this is just too much, man. Uh, I need medication. I, I need that. I need that Norco uh, at night when I can't handle it anymore. Um, I know my pain tolerance and I can take a lot of pain. Um, I can take a lot of very discomforting pain. I can find ways to deal with it. Uh, and the only way I can deal with this, this pain when it gets to that, that level is the Norco. It, it knocks me out, 
so I can sleep and I can get at least five, five and a half hours of sleep and I don't feel the pain. Um, at least I get some rest. Uh, so if anybody out there has any ideas on other things other than this, um, this type of drug, uh, please let me know. Um, it's safer, something safer, healthier. Um, we'll do the same thing or, or near the same thing. I'm all ears um, because it's uh, it's been something else. So that's my that's my one side effect that um, I get to deal with, and even that I'd rather deal with that than the nausea and the throwing up, the mouth sores. I've seen people get rashes. Um, I've seen other things. Um, the rashes were pretty bad. Um, I've seen people can't eat. Um, so I consider myself lucky. I really do. I consider myself lucky that, yeah, this is painful. And yeah, this hurts. And I'm in pain right now talking to you. But I can manage it. And I can eat. Even though I can't taste it, <laughs> I can still eat. I can drink. I can brush my teeth. Um, I, I don't have to deal with mouth sores. Uh, I don't have to deal with a rash that just all over me but I can't lie down I can't sleep I can't you know I can't deal with that I don't I don't need to deal with that stuff I have this pain in the bones and the muscles and I'm, I'm happy that I have this pain in the bone and the muscles I can deal with it and I'll find ways to get through it because that's what happens you know um, you find a way to get through you find a way to battle through <laughs> So, so that's basically the, the treatment plan. Done with number five. This coming Friday, I have number six. I don't know if I'm gonna go to 100%. We're gonna say 80. Um, but whatever they say is best for my body and to get me back and out of this cancer <laughs> and done with this cancer, um, I'm all in. I'm all in. And, and we'll, we'll take it and we'll, we'll go one day at a time and I'll deal with whatever comes because um, I like this life. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a good time. Even what I'm dealing with right now, I'm still having a good time. You know, um, I have a lot of support. I have a lot of people who care about me and love me and, and love us and love our family um, and want to see us, you know, live a long happy life and so I'm all in whatever they tell me to do I'm, I'm gonna do to the best of my ability you know and God's gonna take care of it you know God's gonna give them the the, the mindset the the knowledge um, and he's gonna give me the strength to fight through this and that's what we're doing so my medications, hopefully this is the amount of medications that I get to stay with from this point on. Um, and, and, and we're good. I don't need to add more medications to me. Um, which means because adding more medications to me basically means more complications. I don't want that, right? Um, and then the side effects, like I said, it's painful, it's aggravating, it's frustrating. Um, but I can deal with it. I can deal with it. Thank you for listening, and um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.